EU, which claim that Aborigines were actually farmers based on discredited or invented sources, so totally rubbish. Uh, two Aboriginal groups have also said Pasco is wrong to claim as a member of their tribe, and this refused to prove he is, because he's not. All his ancestors actually seem to be of English descent. But, you see, it does turn out there is big money for Pasco in being Aboriginal. Now, writer Tony Thomas has gone through the Pasco business empire for Quadrant Online, and he joins me now. Tony Thomas, thank you so much for your time. Talk us through this Pasco empire. I mean, start with the Black Duck Foods charitable entity that was, of course, uh, set up to, uh, uh, in, as part of his discredited theory that Aborigines were actually farmers. Black Duck Foods was created to revive the supposedly lost knowledge and techniques. First of all, um, how much money have donors given it? Well, it's nearly two million now. I expect it's over two million. Some of it's come from the government uh, via taxpayers, others from foundations, and and uh, particularly <laughs> others have come from uh, other Aboriginal uh, uh, foundation bodies. Uh, so uh, there's uh, and there's a few mums and dads uh, bits of money in there as well. So he's rolling in it. Uh, the last uh, time I looked at his bank account, it had uh, four hundred thousand dollars in cash uh, sitting there for his uh, 60 hectare farm. So uh, he, he's out of the woods completely on, on finances these days. And this uh, Black Duck Foods, what, 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 what kind of stuff does it do? I mean, uh, for instance, uh, a welcome to country, how much would it charge for that? $500. Uh, if you want to stay one night at uh, Pasco's farm at uh, Gypsy Point near Malakuta, That'll set you back $800. And what I particularly like was that he's perfectly happy to yarn to you, but at the end of the yarning, uh, after one hour's yarning, you have to pay him $300. So uh, there's, uh, he, he was, uh, of course, doing this for free, but uh, so, so many tourists were descending on his farm that he said, uh, to hell with this, uh, if this is capitalism, these people are going to pay. So he set all these rates. Well, that's fair enough, I guess, but uh, I just wonder about some of the talks. You know to, in your piece that uh, you can get him to talk about how he talks to pelicans uh, and in the yes. Aboriginal language, which, of course, pelicans understand. Yes, that's right, and he, he uh, talks to other animals that gather around him uh, also in language in a, what he calls a culturally appropriate way because these animals are his cousins. <laughs> and that's, of course, assuming that it is actually a human uh, Aborigine, when in fact his uh, birth records suggest, or his uh, genealogical tree suggests that every one of his ancestors are of English descent, but never mind about that. Bruce's uh, personal business, Pasco Publishing, that actually owns his farm at Malakuta, which is leased back to Black Duck Foods. What kind of money are we talking about there? Well, the, the latest accounts by Pizza Partners give occupancy costs at $140,000 for a 60-hectare farm. But that's only the start of it because uh, Black Duck Foods is a charity and it's got all this money uh, from charitable donors and it is hiring the labour, it is uh, building sheds, it is repairing fences, it's bought all uh, Bruce's uh, farm gear, the tractors and the uh, odds and sods for $90,000 roughly cash. And so uh, Pasco, instead of having his farm as a sort of a cash drain, he now uh, has every cost picked up by the charity called uh, Black Duck Foods under the presumption that Black Duck Foods is pioneering for Australia a whole new agricultural paradigm involving uh, grass seeds and uh, whatever. Yeah, but it strikes me that this paradigm doesn't seem to have much going for it, given that if you want to uh, buy a packet of seeds, it's got just a, you know, 250 grams worth, it's going to cost you $90.00. And the yield that he is getting from the so-called, you know, these, these Aboriginal grass seeds that you can make bread from and all that, 
it seems to be very, very poor. I don't know that you can make a, a good living out of it. Well, the agriculturalists, uh, the real ones, have told me that the productivity of the grass seeds is about 50 kilograms per hectare, whereas for prime wheat, you're talking two tonnes per hectare. And the, 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 the output is so scanty that the grass seeds sell for something like $300 a kilogram, and Pasco himself has said a friend has sold a kilogram for $1,000. Well, imagine trying to make a loaf of bread from seed that costs $1,000 a kilogram. <laughs> uh, it's just extraordinary to me. Still, look, you know, good luck to him, I guess, uh, you know, cornering the market and being an Aboriginal farmer. It seems to me that for this white guy, being Aboriginal is actually big business. Well, it's, a, it's an excellent business uh, model. And um, the, it's just brilliant the way instead of, instead of having to pay himself for all, all his farm costs, uh, he's got a charity uh, with all sorts of big names behind it, uh, paying it all for him. So uh, it's an absolute no-lose for Bruce. Well, look, uh, I think you're right there. Look, it's a marvellous uh, piece. We've asked Bruce Pascoe to come on and comment, but uh, so far, no response. We never have asked him, you know, about his average or whatever, no response. But, um, yeah, if people want to see more, go to Quadrant Online. Tony Thomas, thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Andrew. I'll say it again. If Bruce Pascoe ever agrees to come on the show and explain everything, tell me why I'm wrong... We would love to have you. In fact, I've given the whole hour, right? That's a promise after the break. The Albanese government today 